Hey everyone, we're at the Noxo booth at Computex 2023. This is actually a really interesting one, so it's less focused necessarily on specific products and more a split between products and engineering challenges. And I'm hoping to be joined later by someone from Noctua once it quiets down a little bit in the convention center to have a specific standalone technical discussion that you'll see, up, see go up separately on this, which is eight years of struggle and challenges designing one fan. So if you've been wondering, where's Noctua with new stuff? That's their answer. They wanted to come to the show and address the question of what's going on at Noctua. The answer's been a lot of R&D work and a lot of challenges, but it's starting to look like they're overcoming many of them. So that'll be a separate video. For this one, we're gonna focus more on the product side. And on the product side specifically, there is once again a showing of a new NHD 15. This currently doesn't have a name other than NHD 15 Next Gen or Gen 2. Uh, and there's some differences here. This is the old one next to it. I'll talk you through those. In addition to this, we'll also be covering a direct die frame that uh, probably many of you have already seen in Roman's videos. So this is made in collaboration with Der Bauer. And then over here, they've got some actually really cool offset mounting diagrams just illustrated on the IHS. And actually we've got some technical drawings here as well. Uh, which we've talked about offset mounting before. It's, it can be very beneficial on AMD. It depends on what the platform is, uh, but that's all stuff that Noct was working on in addition to the cooler. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic and the Liquid Freezer 2 Liquid Coolers, now including an ARGB model in the lineup. The Liquid Freezer series has been a top performer in our benchmark for years now, and Arctic has continually fine-tuned its products even post-launch with things like kits for Ryzen, ARGB fans for new flare, and new radiator sizes. The company also has its brand new MX6 thermal paste on the market now. Learn more at the links in the description below. Let's start with briefly some of the fan history and then we'll leave the rest of it to the technical discussion later on. So next to me they've got the old D15, the new D15 in as controlled a test condition as Noctua can create in a, uh, a convention center that has completely zero environmental control for testing whatsoever. They're, Noctua says they're expecting anywhere from like two to four degrees difference or so in a highly controlled environment at a 200 to 300 watt heat load. And it depends on the IHS as well between next gen and the previous D15s. And that is actually a large difference in thermals for coolers because as you've seen in our reviews, getting even one degree is difficult, especially if it's outside of error. So that's a pretty large jump between the two and it would be enough to put Noctua back into fierce competition with the top end of the chart, uh, especially if we revise testing in the future. For the fan development life cycle, just as briefly as possible, what you're looking at is a bunch of prototypes. These weren't intended to be the final colors or anything like that. This is just the different materials they used. So they started designing the fan that ended up on the NHD 15 G, uh, Gen 2 in 2015. And yes, it did actually take eight years to get to the point where it is now. Uh, and some of the differences that are more apparent you see alterations between, say, uh, nine blade, seven blade, or even an odd man out, 10 blade design, which this is abnormal to do for reasons we'll talk about later. But they were trying to fine tune, walking through this development life cycle, the performance for as many scenarios as possible and not just run it for a single use scenario. So that's one of the biggest challenges that fan manufacturers face or cooler manufacturers you take the same fan, you put it up against a honeycomb mesh, uh, up against a tower like the ones in front of us, or up against a radiator, especially radiators of varying uh, impedance now that there's these sort of dual stack designs where there's multiple sets of fins in between the pipes. Those all present different challenges for a fan. Nox was trying to balance as much as they can for uh, uh, as close as you can get to a one size fits all performance as possible without just building for one specific use case. And that is hard, and that's why Noctua has been working on this so much. But there are other reasons too. Now, the end result, you've heard us use the three letters LCP a lot during this show. That's liquid crystal polymer. And that's the plastic that a lot of the fan manufacturers have moved to to allow for a really tight tolerance between the outer frame and the actual blade. So getting to say 0 0.4, 0 0.6, uh, 0.3 millimeters in some cases we've talked about, that requires a material that is able to uh, reduce the expansion under one spinning and two heat. 
And the problem with LCP, the reason you don't just jump to it right away and go problem solved, it's done now, is cost. So going for LCP and away from something like ABS or some other plastic, and also trying to tune for all these different use cases, that's what Noctua has, uh, that's the position they've gotten stuck in. And there, I think there's a little bit to be said here from the adage, perfect is the enemy of good, but Noctua wants it to be perfect. So that's what they're going for. But currently, Noctua thinks it's on target for a quarter two for the D15 and quarter one for the fan. Uh, no price target yet, but it will come with a couple of other things other than just the cooler. And one of those is going to be uh, thermal paste. They're including the screwdriver, as usual, the Noctua screwdriver. They go with a, a larger screwdriver so that you can actually get down in there in, in between the fin stack. And then an offset mounting kit will be included, which is pretty cool. That's, that's a little bit different. It's something unique. For differences for the cooler itself, so first most obvious thing is the amount of heat pipes. It's at eight now. It's a lot. It's got eight six mil heat pipes. Also, the cold plate, I'm going to flip these both towards the camera, is fairly large on the new model, which will be beneficial for IHSs where they can actually leverage that. So say like a modern uh, 3900K or whatever may come next. But beyond this, uh, the heat pipes have been, we were told by Noctua, tuned quite a bit. And when you talk about tuning heat pipes, so there's a few different types. There's sintered, mesh, weave, composite, things like that. Composite is when you start mixing multiple types of heat pipe together to form, hopefully, a better version of uh, what any one of them might be. Noctua made the point to us that although currently they're using a composite approach for the heat pipes, that may not be what they ship with because all they care about is the best heat pipe for the job and sintered composite doesn't matter as much as tuning it. And things that they may tune for include the specific length of the heat pipe, the wicking structure, uh, and performance under dry out conditions. So you might have different orientations of a cooler, say in desktop style or, or tower versus flat, and, uh, and then different heat loads. So once you start getting an excess, especially of 300 watts, dry out is a much bigger problem for heat pipes. So those are some of the differences. Now, uh, functionally, there's also an offset. Let me turn this around. So uh, now the cooler is asymmetrical. This is to allow for better clearance of the video card, especially as companies have started adding these thicker backplates to cards. So they're offsetting to one side. Dimensionally, this is mostly the same, except it's, I think, I think it was about eight millimeters shallower, something like that, uh, but mostly the same dimensions. And then they're going with two of these new fans, which are yet to be named, uh, that will be included. So that covers the D15 Gen 2 about as quickly as I can, considering it's not out yet and won't be for uh, uh, another half year or so, a little more actually, quarter two. Uh, other products, we're not gonna cover too much depth, but. Threadripper Next Gen has some stuff coming up. You've probably seen rumors about Threadripper in the news. Uh, certainly we've, I don't think I can say too much about it actually, so I'm gonna stop there. But there's Threadripper Gen 2 stuff on the table. Same situation, no finalized name or details for a lot of this. And obviously this is dependent on the product actually existing in CPU form as well, which um, I think it's probably fair to assume it will at this point because, am I breaching embargo? No. It says next gen Threadripper. In other words, it's not my fault. So <laughs> it's right there. Uh, that's most of it. So offset mounting's cool. They're getting a couple degrees on the offset. We saw similar in our Arctic liquid freezer testing previously, where offsetting the LF2 cooler on AM4 would get you like two, three degrees sometimes. Uh, so that's a natural pr progression to make and also including it with the Gen 2 D15 is going to make Noctua a little bit more competitive because they're going to be high on the price side when you consider eight years of development for a fan. So I think that covers most of it. I'm really looking forward to the technical deep dive on this later. We're going to try and find a quiet time to do that. Uh, and I'm going to close on this, which I did not have any time to talk to uh, Noctua's people about. I have no idea what it is, but I thought it would be cool to show it because it's a, a it's a drink thing. Is this is this going to be a real product or is this just a show thing? No, 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 no. it's not going to be a real product. It's uh, it just has no offense in our heatsink inside. It has a, oh, it actually does. It has Noctua fans and heatsinks inside, and uh, unfortunately, not going to be a real product. I mean, it is a real product. It's sold, it's used, but it's not a product.
Uh, it is a real. Okay. <laughs> what is it called? It's called Kula. It's, it's on the tag. This, okay, this is apparently actually a thing. I well, I apologize to Kula if that is the Austrian company. company who designed that. We helped with the Kula. Okay. Well, in that case, and shoulder gun, and uh, that'll cover the booth. So. Thanks for watching. Check back for the coverage of the fan. Subscribe for more as always, and we'll see you all next time.